make it here. Right here. That would cause them to be up here, not up here. Well, it is up. It yeah. Is right okay, going back to the balance thing, and when Linda said that they can be straight in front, straight behind, and be balanced, the length of back and the length of loin also affects balance in a huge way. They're not going to be balanced if they're equally angulated or equally straight or equal on both sides if they're abnormally long or short. If you have a short dog that's way over angulated front and rear, that is a true cripple. <laughs> they can't walk at all. I, I, like I said, with whippets, a lot of them are like, some of them are like that. A really long dog with straight front and rear, it can move great, but it looks very fine. So that's part of balance too. Where these are set, those things are all part of balance. Um, this is the problem when you have old people. <laughs> the thought before it reaches the mouth, it doesn't come out. Um, oh, I looked at a lot of puppies. Like I show Irish setters, and you look at those puppies, and if you have a lot of annulation front or rear in a young dog, a lot, you're not going to have normally a real sound dog because it doesn't have the musculature to support all of that angle and that develops with age, usually. Um, if they have real heavy muscles and they're born with it, that helps, but straighter dogs are sounder, they're almost always cleaner, not necessarily sounder, but cleaner coming and going. Monica, wake up. Wake up. Are <laughs> we that boring, Monica? <laughs> <laughs> okay, some of the other faults about in the rear. When you, when you see a dog stacked, you should be able to draw a line from here straight down to the toes. That was really good. Julie, you did a great job. If that dog, if the, it is considerably out to China, not to China, I should say to the ocean. That dog, the bones are not in proportion. The bones are too long if it's like this. Way too long. That's very extreme. What does our standard say? How many 50,000 times? Moderate. 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 Yes, I'm, I'm getting it. I know. I did write that. So did there, I mean, so when you're stacking, right, and I, I have to admit, I'm very, I'm very guilty of it. I overstretch my dogs. I think we all do. A lot of us do. <laughs> Linda says she doesn't, but Linda's perfect. Well, so. <laughs> you know, I have to defend the judges. There are actually oh. ones that do know something. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. But I mean, if you put that hawk straight, if your dog is built right, you're, it's not going to go clear out to the Pacific Ocean. It would be like this. If your dog is built, set it too wide. Think of an Irish. Think of an Irish setter. Those rears are long forever. That's not what we want. If you had a good rear and set too far back, that's what I'd be like. And then your toes, I can't tell it back here if they're straight, but you would lose all your angle. When you look down over its rear, it should, the hawk should be like that. Okay, sickle hawks. <laughs> I was I was mentoring a judge not very long ago and they tried to, they told me that the only way you can see sickle hawks is in the movie. <laughs> and the movies? Yeah, that's the only way you can tell if a dog's sickle hawks is their movie. So we had the I'm not gonna change the judge's name, but she ripped on every dog in the ring and said they were sickle hawk. Well, they were all puppies. And they were all moving like German shepherds, okay? I mean, let's go! Okay, that... I could kind of say, well, maybe, but a sickle hawk, when you stack them, that hawk is going to look like a sickle. When that dog stops, he can't put that rear out. That rear is going to go up under him and the hawk is going to go like that. You can feel it. If you try to stretch it, you can't. They are going to move it back because it's very uncomfortable. 
It's why, yeah, well, yeah, it is. Yeah, you can see it in motion, but she tried to tell me that you could only see it in motion. It had nothing to do with the stat. When that dog moves, it's a sickle. Think of a sickle. When that dog moves, how is it? Flex this? They, can't, they can't flex that. It's going to go like this. Well, and you see a lot of dogs, a lot of English cockers, when their rears move and they extend it, this is the total extension of the rear. That's it. <coughs> it never stretches it, you know, it never stretches, it never pushes. They go because they're sick of hot. Oh, I mean, look at that. I see, now I see why she was giving me this. Yes. There is an example. Oh. I have to have pictures. <laughs> and that visual. Huh? I did a pretty good one. You did a good one. Yeah. You can. But you can feel them in a stack. I mean, don't you judges agree? You can feel them. But you, like I said, when they move, they cannot. When you're watching the dog from the rear, you should be able to see that pad. How is a sickle going to do that? Because it's like this. It's going to go. And it isn't just the joint at the hock that doesn't open. Very often the joint, the hip and the knee don't, don't flex. open either. So they don't have any length of pushing power with that foot on the ground for a long time before it comes up. So those hot, those those joints can all be kind of closed and they just they just kind of go and like they this. Like a little bit each other. They right. all affect each other. Right. That's it. I mean, everything goes together. You know what it's like if you ever are trying to do something in a small space and you don't have enough room to stretch your, your arm or your limb out? It's like that they live like this. They can't stretch it all out. It's like they're smashed. Somebody come up here next. What? Come up here next. So to clarify, if we put a dog with a true sickle hawk on the table, would we be able to flex? That hop joint, or you mean pick no, it up, and pick it up and flex it. Yeah, you should. I believe so. You think? I think the joints are normal. Yeah. It's the length of the bone that causes them to be sickle hopped. I, I think the joints are normal. If you pick it up and pull it all the way out, it would be okay. Or that would, the dog would have a orthopedic problem. Okay. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe it. It's you can do that, but the dog himself can't do it because his bones are all the wrong length. Tony, you're wrong. Whatever you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but as groomers, you have to be careful that we don't groom them. That's what I said. Yeah. I see so many people do that because maybe they had a straight dog at one point or somebody taught them to groom that this on an angle, which it shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. Like around, like short of the, short of the pad, yes. bottom pad of the foot, and up like this. I mean, our tops are supposed to be straight. Why would you groom a sickle in it? Because you don't know. <laughs> exactly. All the, time. All the time. Anything, I mean, you can think of we need to cover with you. We enjoyed our butts. You know, we decided butts were good for Julie and I because we both have food. Fine. Fine, Yes. But the tail that you put in there. The this one? one? Yeah. Um, you know, I see. Carrier tail, which is what I would call it. Um, but I also see them coming off the top. Coming I mean, like right here? Yeah. Yeah. And I think people need to realize there's some that are groomed with hair to look like it's coming off the top, and then others that are actually coming off the top, and the judges need to feel for that. Well, you also need to look at how Repeat. long that group is. Repeat. Um, it, it's the Repeat what he said. He said that a lot of tails look like they're coming off the top because they're groomed that way, and you need to feel it to see where they're really coming off. Because you, you know can feel you can feel a steep group. Okay, if that if that group is steep like this, and that tail comes off there, you can feel it. Just like I said, I mean, our groups don't drop off like that. Okay, it's it's just an ever slight drop, guys. It's not. I, should, I guess I, I, my thing is, is it's not like an English cocker. Because to me, I think English cockers drop off way, a lot more. Well, they drop off too much, and they want them to drop right. off more than ours. So if you want to see one that drops off, 
go see English coppers because that's, and they groom them to drop off. <laughs> okay, this is the crude, if you don't know what we're talking about. And this is one that drops off kind of okay. But you don't want this real short, and you don't want it real, real, real long. But you want a longer croup than a lot of our dogs have. It, a lot of Springers and a lot of English Cockers have a real short croup, and that also affects all of these other, the way these other bones react to each other. I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you the, I'll give you the big terminology. Okay, the croup angle is determined by the slope of the sacrum vertebrae. That's and the first, okay, she's going to tell me. And the first two tail vertebrae with the horizontal. Yep. The croup angle only determines tail set. Okay? A low tail set indicates a steep pelvis. Okay? A steep pelvis indicates poor back and reach. We just talked about that. It's not going to be able to reach. Okay, when you're grading puppies at two months old, eight, nine weeks, um, that there's a way that you can tell if they're actually going to have too low a tail set um, that I learned. Um, the bones beneath the tail are the protrude. That's protrude. Yeah, you're talking about Yes, this. correct. That bone needs to be just like she's drawing out. If that is flush straight down, if that is flush straight down, you're going to end up with a low tail set. That was because, and puppies change. I'm going to draw them. Because you got the pelvis here. If it's steep, it's going to come out here. If you if it you want to have a low, if it's a low. I'm going to say I forgot. <laughs> I'm blonde. What can I say?
you want to walk in front of the camera. You're yes. Front of the camera. Okay. Um, I think some longtime readers of this have been talking on the Facebook group about the difference between the group being rounded versus the slice to your face. Pull the to your mouth. Okay. <laughs> Just following instructions. Some people on the Facebook group have been talking about the difference between a rounded group versus a slightly sloping, and I would like some clarification on that because I'm not entirely sure of the difference. I think that a rounded group might be like, 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 so it would be a fat butt. Do you think that's what it is? I think that's what it would be. Do you think a rounded crew increases the risk of having a broken back? Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Repeat that. The question, the question was, I'm, I'm stepping in because I'm standing here and I have the mic. The question was, does a rounded crew increase the risk of a... Oh, I have a broken back. Yeah, I have half of it. Because if it's rounded here, I mean... I mean, I, I've never heard that about a rounded versus a... It was on the Facebook group. It it's was? It's a slide. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I don't know my question because I have a puppy. Come up here. Get, get the mic. I, I have a puppy that definitely did everything you're saying is exactly it. The, she would start here. Mm -hmm. She definitely has a little more slope than I'm liking. Your puppy, right? Your puppy. Yes, my puppy. So, and I am seeing when she's, sometimes she looks like she's flat, and sometimes she looks like she's a little more roachy through here. Why would you want her to start dropping off here? Why is that good for you? Why do you think that's good? That's not right. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. That's I thought you said you liked that. No. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> she, that, she, no, she was our pick puppy, one of our pick puppies in a litter we had, and I'm seeing this on her, and that's why I went on, and I was like, okay, guys, I need to know, is this, but she is, to me, she looks roachy. So everything you guys are saying, I am seeing with, if they drop in the group, they, they can look like a shark. I call it look like a shark. Like they're getting a little bit high in the back here, and then drops down just a little right. bit too low. So they're not even really short back? Not be able to is she quite short back? And short no. couple? No, she's not. not. That has to do with the. Yeah, so I, I just, it, it, you know, she's on the fence. So I, I was like, personally, I think it's a group stage. I've seen puppies do that. And well, in a lot of different breeds, and some of them don't, some of them don't have a group. I mean, they're only like, you know, 16 weeks. You know, 14, 16 weeks right now. So it, it was just something that I. What? I mean, what did it look like in eight or nine weeks? She, I saw a slight group, other people loved her. I, I saw a slight more drop than I. Than you like? Because I had a, a previous dog that I kept for, you know, two years and never could show her. Yeah. Well, you know, and I also feel that in our dog game, people don't like to see that drop off in a croup. And when you got a puppy that doesn't have a lot of coat, you're going to see it. And I think... And she does it right now. She's a liver, so there isn't any coat to even hide. They say, oh, it's post pictures. Well, she has, she has a liver coat right now. It's just fuzzball. There's not much there to even hide anything to even, you know, like I said, if we don't, if you don't need moose, it's probably incorrect. That's kind of what I'm hearing. If you don't need a little moose to show them there, I, I, that, then you don't need point. a little moose there, they're probably a little bit incorrect. If I don't need moose to I, 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 I have to admit, I have to admit when I look at puppies, I'm drawn to the ones that don't have any draw puppies. Yes, I don't. No moose. I think everybody kind of is. I mean, it looks good. But that doesn't mean it's correct. Plus, a lot of puppies have so much hair that you can't really judge their top ones unless you shave them or get them wet. An old-time um, breeder by the name of Andrea Glassford taught me, told me, you take a tin blade and you shave those puppies at seven weeks old because it's there. I know. And you know, the thing is, is it's really, I hated that. But she's got a point. She says, you know, when, you, when you're looking at puppies, you automatically fix the faults and not knowing you're doing it when you're grooming. This way, because, I mean, you say, okay, well, that dog's a little bit dead, so I'm going to leave here there. So you're covering all those faults up in a puppy. And she, I mean, she was right. 
Because if you shave that back down, oh my God, you see everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can. That was just her thing. Well, and, and a lot of puppies are slick. Slick, slick, slick. Right, so you can't see it. Right. Linda, you got to come up here. We've got litters of puppies and we've all stacked them for so long, so many groups of puppies. We know what we want to see and we automatically fix them to be that picture of what it is that we want to see. Exactly, yes. So everybody's got that. Right. We fix that. We fix that. Well, that's what Andrew Gosford always told me. She goes, you, You've been doing it for so many years, you're going to automatically groom it out of them. But who picks their puppies from a stacked picture? I don't, I don't even stack them. I just look at them on the ground, yeah. and they're going to be what they're going to be on the ground. Even if they have fluffy backs, if they roll when they're little puppies, they're going to roll as adults. Any person can stack one to look gorgeous. Sell them on the table. Right. Sell them on the table, pick them on the ground, like Kathy said. Any other questions? Are we clear as mud? Did we just get you all confused? Or were we okay? We want to give you a few minutes to walk to hit the restrooms and we'll reconvene in five minutes.